Well, hello, friends. It's Pearl of Wisdom here, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And I got a show from 3 to 5 Eastern, 5 days a week. This is Friday today, and uh, we're doing it today. And I also like to do videos. I'm called My NHL Pearls of Wisdom because I like to pretend I have any wisdom at all. I don't know. Actually, where I get most of the stuff that I do is from the show. We get together and we do like fun stuff like we're about to do right here. We did a segment where we looked at all the free agents and where they may go. And I thought you might be interested and you might be able to put your idea as to where you think players may go. Uh, Maybe you want them on your team. Tell me in the comment section Uh, and just have some fun. So let's go at it. Go by the way, if you haven't already subscribe hit the bell and you can get this fine programming every time it comes up. You go ding. And then you'll be like, oh, Pearl of Wisdom. Yeah. (laughs) Okay, let's look at uh, what we have here. I'm going to move me out of here. And uh, we're going to start with the top. I may do a couple of these videos. I'm not sure yet. Uh, But uh, Alex Ovechkin, where he may go. Um, I think he's going to Washington. There's no doubt about it. Uh, If he doesn't, he goes to the KHL. Um, They sign him to, I'll I'll look at, we'll look at, uh, I wanted to look at also how much they're making. Nine million. He's going to sign. I'm going to guess. I'm going to take a lucky guess. Tell me what you think in the comment section. I think he does something like four and a half or something like that. He'll take a pay cut to get another run at a cup, maybe even more. This might be the most interesting part of what Alvechkin does here because Washington seriously needs cap space to work on their defense and uh, um, maybe bring in some more guys. There's been talk about them putting Oshie out there, but... I think they're just going to keep on running for a cup. And Ovechkin may just help them out here with his little, uh, with his salary that he chooses. He's made a lot of money. He's a good guy. You just never know. He might do it. Uh, Ryan Getzlaff. In fact, he's actually said something that he's going to get a team friendly deal. Ryan Getzlaff, probably back to Anaheim, uh, making a lot less than he made on his previous contract, $8 million. Uh, as you can see, he put up 17 points. He hasn't put up great numbers. He'll probably just come back on one-year contract for $2 million if he wants to stay in Anaheim. If he decides to do something funky, think about L.A. I, apparently, L.A. was in on the possibility of bringing him in for the, for the stretch run this year. Um, and they have said that the rebuild is over. And you're going to hear their name, the L.A. Kings a couple times in this that we're doing so possibly not far away it gets to stay close to home if LA's really saying it's over they could do some things to make themselves a bit of a contender here especially in the division they're going to be in um that's what we're talking remember this is this is just from us bantering back and forth on my show coming up spitballing ideas where they might go Taylor Hall um I originally thought he would be going back to Boston um, but the more it, I, the, the last playoff round hall, wasn't the greatest. He's going to have to take a serious pay cut off of his 8 million. I won't even show you most, you know, that he made 8 million last year by the Buffalo Sabres. Now, the, a lot of the people were saying going back home to the Calgary flames, he liked playing in Edmonton. Uh, I'd say that is a possibility, but. He has a vacation home in Ontario. His his uh, fa- his family is from Ontario. His wife loves it in Ontario. Um, probably the reason why he went with Buffalo, because it's somewhat close to Ontario, um, gave that a shot. So here's something for you. Here's a little take. What about the Montreal Canadiens? Um, they don't sign Tatar. He takes a sort of team-friendly deal. And he goes to the Montreal Canadiens with all of that, uh, with all of their. Um, the biggest thing with Taylor Hall is it's probably best. I think people have figured out to not have him be the leader of your team. 
And with Montreal having all the leaders that they do have, Taylor Hall is slight, a, a possibility, I think, passing the puck there uh, to Suzuki and uh, all, it, it would be an interesting play. That's what I think. Tell me what you th- where else you may think he may go. David Krejci, I think almost surely, assuredly will go back to Boston on a cheap deal. Now, they didn't take Chara and they traded away Krug for, to look at their young defense. Are they going to do sort of the same thing with Krejci? Is Boston doing a sneaky little rebuild here? Possibly. And if he is, I would look at a few teams like, they say, the uh, Minnesota Wild, uh, maybe go wait till, their, uh, till Rossi becomes more mature of a player and could be their number one center. Um, again, LA Kings, look at that. They could want some cups there. Also, Colorado. So we had a few teams there, but I really think it's probably going back to Boston. My leaning on Tuka Rask is he's going to retire. I think after the injuries and all of that, I think when he plays it all out in his head, goes back to his family, and uh, he'll just realize that maybe it's time to go. If not, I think he goes back to Boston on a much cheaper deal than he had before. He had a rough playoffs. Uh, What was he making? Seven million. You know, maybe four million, something of that nature. So it's going to be up to him if he wants to try it again because he's had a lot of injury issues. Uh, Paul Stastny, um, he could go to so many different places. 35-year-old, great two-way player. I th- we were looking at possibly the Edmonton Oilers on a cheap deal. They definitely need a third-line center there. If he's willing to go to Winnipeg uh, and he's been there twice, Edmonton's not far away. Um, it's, you know, the same sort of climate that he doesn't seem to mind. I think that would be a good play for him. Um, if he's willing to go just about anywhere, there's there's a lineup of teams that'll be looking for Paul, at Paul Stastny. Maybe even the Ottawa Senators. They had Stepan. Uh, they brought him in for a veteran presence. Paul Stastny's that type of player. But more than likely, he's going to be looking for a cup. Maybe back to Colorado. Um, there's a few things. But Edmonton Oilers seem to be the most likely possibility. Stepan, I am not sure. Really, I'm not sure. He could go. Um, his family is really set in uh, Arizona. And it's possible he just plays out his career there. Zetterberg will be retired. Brandon Sod, I don't think Colorado is going to go this route again. They've got some young players that can take his spot now, probably, I think. And uh, he's kind of left out in the lurch there. We were thinking a team that could really use a guy like Brandon Saad is Carolina. He's won a couple cups. They've needed a player like that since Williams left. He's not really in that Williams category, but it would be really valuable for them to bring a couple cups into uh, Carolina, I think, and help those young guys as they've had a little bit of difficulty in the playoffs so far. So we thought Carolina would be a really good place for him there. David Backus retired. Alexander Edler, almost, uh, he has been consistently saying Vancouver, Vancouver, Vancouver. I think he'll just sign there. He loves it there. I doubt he goes anywhere else. Ryan Nugent Hopkins, this is a very interesting one because it looked like he was for sure going to Edmonton, back to Edmonton again. And then at the, at the end of the season, the deal they had worked out, they changed their mind on. Possibly thinking he's not what they need in the playoffs. And they're going to be looking elsewhere, trying to fill out their roster, as we already said, with um, Paul, with Stastny or somebody like that. If he were to go, if he were to go somewhere, there's another one that Minnesota, I think, would be a really good possibility. It's not very far away. Again, another, um, uh, they could use centermen, uh, but it's going to be depending on the deal because Rossi is going to be their guy of their future, I imagine. But until then, um, he could sign somewhere like that. I mentioned LA already. Um, Look at possibly Detroit. Detroit is a team that I think we got to watch in the, I think they're getting to the point where it's time to start being more of a team. And I don't think they can play this. We're going to keep on being in the bottom of the league and drafting players for too much longer. 
I think Detroit Red Wings is a distinct possibility. Um, I the aforementioned Ottawa Senators again. Uh, they looked fantastic down the stretch last year. I think they're going to be a lot better team next year than um, a lot of people may be giving them credit for. Um, the way they looked in the second half, uh, it's very possible they could be buyers here. So those are two teams that I was looking at. Tell me again what you think you might be looking at for that. Brandon Dubinsky's probably retired. And we're going to end this segment with Dougie Hamilton. We'll start the next one after Dougie Hamilton. Dougie Hamilton, um, apparently rumblings are coming out of Carolina that he won't be signing with Carolina. It's probably a money issue. They've got an internal cap. They've got uh, Jake Bean coming up looking really good there, and they might think that they can use him instead of bringing in somebody like Dougie Hamilton. Now, the problem with Dougie Hamilton is is this will be, he's only, um, what, 24 or 25 years old, and this will be his third team. I have a something in here blocking me from being able to see that. Let me try to remove that. No, still can't see it. Yeah, there we go. Dougie Hamilton. He is 28. Oh, my. I didn't even realize he was 28 years old. Anyways, he's moved over. He's moved around quite a bit in the league, and I think it's going to be a little uh, difficult for Dougie Hamilton. There seems to be an error in the, in the uh, uh, air, I guess you'd say, that Dougie Hamilton is a problem in the room. So I would look for him to go someplace that is really strong, has really strong leadership. I'm going to go back to where we, I, we are, we are going back to the LA Kings here. This, um, they've got strong leadership there. Um, and they're also sort of not rebuilding anymore. Um, they have a pretty young defense besides a couple other veterans. And, um, Dougie Hamilton, I think could fit in very well there. It's also a very liberal place, L.A. Um, there's a lot of talk that Dougie Hamilton is looking to go to a more exciting city, and L.A. would certainly be that. It's about as maybe the most exciting city, you know, besides possibly New York that you can find. So we think L.A. I think Winnipeg will be on the phone. They're desperately needing uh, somebody like that. Uh, there's other people that Winnipeg will be looking at, and we'll get that to the next next video. Another team is the Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh, it that will a lot of it will depend on whether they go with Riley. I could see them if they're not if they don't think Riley is their future one-two guy anymore, and he's kind of struggled a little bit the last two years in regard to being a one-two. And if he's looking for that one-two money. They could go to Dougie Hamilton, who analytically, and Dubas is supposed to be an analytics guy, is an absolute beast and always and has been for quite some time. So I could see them ponying up the scratch that they would give to Riley, trade Riley for some forwards, and go that direction. Next time, we'll be getting into Sajak, Stahl, Landeskog, Polino, Goligoski, Schwartz, and Tatar. That's my full 42 for today, though. Tell me what you think. Have a great day, everybody. Lots of love to you. Okay. Bye.